Hello, and welcome to our tutorial on how to create an activity diagram using Software Ideas Modeler. Today, we're focusing on designing an activity diagram for an authentication process, a fundamental procedure for validating user access in software applications. Activity diagrams are essential in understanding the flow of control and data in a system, providing a graphical representation of workflows or processes. Before we dive into the intricacies of activity diagrams, let's start from the very beginning. First, we create a new project. Look for the Create New Project button located in the right menu on the Start page. Click on it to start. With our new project ready, it's time to specify what kind of diagram we'll be working on. Navigate to the Add New Diagram section within the Project tab. Here, you'll find a variety of diagram types available in Software Ideas Modeler. For our purpose today, choose the Activity Diagram item. Now, we're presented with an empty canvas, ready for us to begin designing our diagram. Let's dive in by starting with an initial node, which marks the beginning of our authentication process. On the left side, you'll find the toolbox. Simply drag the initial node tool button from there and drop it onto the diagram editor canvas. After placing it, clear the default name. Next, right below the initial node, click on the control flow to action button in the context bar. This is where we add our first action in the process. We'll name this action, enter credentials. It's crucial for users to provide their identification details to access the system. Now, we want to create a top-down diagram so let's reposition the action element directly under the initial node. The next step involves adding a decision node to branch our process. Click on the Control Flow to Decision button, which looks like a diamond found in the context bar. Clear the name for now. This decision node will bifurcate into two paths based on the validity of the credentials. First, let's handle the positive outcome. We add a fork element signifying parallel processing by dragging it from the toolbox and connecting it to our decision node using the control flow tool. Now, it's essential to specify the condition under which our process will proceed towards successful authentication. To establish the guard condition, you need to input the text, credentials are valid, within brackets on the flow leading to the fork element. Please make sure to include the brackets. These are not just for show. Brackets around your text indicate that this is a guard condition, a rule that must be satisfied for the process to proceed along this path. For invalid credentials, drag another decision from the toolbox and connect it with a control flow to the first decision node, setting the guard as credentials are invalid. Focusing on the success path, we add three actions under the fork node, load user settings, initialize session data, and send login success notification. Connect each to the fork node with a control flow. Now we introduce a join node into our diagram. The join node plays a crucial role as it signifies the convergence point where all parallel actions must complete before proceeding. To efficiently connect all actions to this node, select all of them, then drag the connector flow tool from the toolbox directly onto the join node. By doing this, we effectively link all actions to the join node simultaneously. The join element ensures that the process can only advance once all parallel activities have been concluded. Progressing from the join, we add an action named Access Granted and conclude with an Activity Final node to signify the end of the process. After detailing the process for successful authentication, let's return to the second decision node, which plays a critical role in our authentication diagram. This node addresses the scenario where the credentials entered by the user are not valid. But what happens next depends crucially on another factor, the number of attempts the user has made. This decision node will branch into two separate paths. The direction taken depends on whether the user is still within the allowed limit of credential entry attempts. If the user has not yet reached this limit, they are given another chance to enter their credentials correctly. Here comes an important part of our diagram design managing the flow back into the process of entering credentials. When a user is given another attempt, we must ensure that the flow from this decision back into the enter credentials action is handled correctly. This is where the merge node becomes indispensable. There is a fundamental rule that multiple flows should not converge directly into an action. To address this, we use a merge node, 
an element that consolidates multiple incoming flows into a single outgoing flow. Let's add this merge node to our diagram by simply dragging the merge button from the toolbox and dropping it over the flow between the initial node and the enter credentials action. Upon incorporation, the merge element splits the original flow into two distinct paths, one leading into the merge element and the other exiting from it. Now, let's add control flows from the decision node to the merge node and specify the guard condition as under attempt limit. For users who have exceeded the attempt limit, we introduce an action named lock account. We connect this action using a connector flow, setting a guard condition labeled over attempt limit. This is followed by the addition of decision nodes that lead to either reset password or contact support. Both options ultimately reconnect to our activity final node. And that's how you create an activity diagram for an authentication process in Software Ideas Modeler. This diagram effectively illustrates the decision-making process involved in user authentication, from entering credentials to handling both success and failure scenarios. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more tutorials on using Software Ideas Modeler to enhance your design and modeling capabilities. And if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon so you never miss an update. Your support helps us create more content like this. See you in the next video.